Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Uh, we've got two Jupiter orbiters on the way to Jupiter. We've got two rescuees to take care of around Earth, and that, well, I mean, not too pressing. And I haven't determined exactly what the order of operations will be. We do have to build a fairly large rocket to retrieve them because they're equatorial and my launch site is not. So we're going to have to do a big old correction in order to get to them. So that's a problem. Now, there's some other contracts here. Two to Leo, that's okay. In fact, depending on the way you think about it, our spacecraft can carry four. So we could launch two to Leo, pick up the other two, and then come back. And then also now with our our new spacecraft, the Lynx, the full-size Lynx, we can do these four ones as well. There's also two to low lunar orbit. That's pretty good. I'm probably never going to do this suborbital spaceflight one. And yeah, milestones. Then there's crewed Mars flyby and crewed Venus flyby. They give us a lot of money, but I'm not too sure we're ready for that yet. But really, what will make us ready for that? Probably larger habitats and such. Let's take a look at the tech tree because we've got some technology. All right, taking a look at this, we do have, we do have these modules, station labs. They're really heavy though. What we need is lighter modules like that. Now I do have USI. Oh, there they are. They're in long-term habitation. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to have to unlock the. R&D building again to get long-term habitation to get the USI modules here. Well, that makes sense. We would need long-term habitation to go to Mars, but that's got to take a lot more science, it looks like. So, all right. Well, I mean, maybe we could do it with these, but these... I don't know how comfy they'll be. Though I don't have Kerbalism in here, so I guess it doesn't matter how comfy they'll be? Forget if something's keeping track of that. Okay, well, let's try and do the Earth orbit rescue mission. Are the USI thing so good? They have built in recyclers in them, so that's nice. You know, the life support recycling units, they're built in. They're also a bit lighter than the ISS modules. Hmm. So, is this good enough to get the Kerbals from Low Earth Orbit? I, I never want to do the Low Earth Orbit ones again after this, though. I, I guess we can take the one that sends two to Low Earth Orbit, and then... Yeah, let's just do that. Reach specified orbit seven days. Well, I hope... And it's only 360 day term, though, there. Well, I guess we'll build one of these. Expensive. And 310 days right now. So we do get to handle the Jupiter Orbiter missions first. Okay, Jupiter Orbiter 2 is coming in before Jupiter Orbiter 1. Seems to have a line back here. I guess the question is whether Jupiter Orbiter 1 has a line back. It does. It seems to be red, but it's still got communications, so it could do stuff too. Well, let's uh, just delete that and go to it. But really, we probably have to wait until we get to periapsis. I don't think I'm going to change anything. We're just going to check up on it. I don't think I need to change anything about this. So alright, we'll just uh, try and add the alarm for the burn ahead of time. Let's say by 24 hours. Okay, just going in with this one. It doesn't seem to have a maneuver plotted yet, so we'll probably have to do more with it. Just keep killing rotation. How's power? Power is still fine. So that's good. Signal is weak. But also still fine. This one is closer to the inclination of the other of the moons, so that's good. And capture, well, capture is modest, though we don't want it to be that high. It'll take forever to do it. So this is good too, and recharging. Okay, we can just warp to this is complete. Well, let's roll that out. But 
while it's rolling out, we have to take care of those Jupiter orbiters, so... Okay, let's go to that one. We do have a Jupiter flyby mission contract. We, make, we have to make sure that does it. Alright, and the flyby contract says below 20,000 kilometers, and we are. And then we do have to collect science, so it's not just a random flyby. We have to get something from it. But right from here we should be able to get something, right? Okay, yeah. Um, transmit. And transmit. Okay, let me just see the comm line. Comm line is fine, but not really at periapsis. At periapsis it's going to be a little bit strained. Okay. We have done the Jupiter flyby, and we've already transmitted the science. Let me get some more science. This is just above the self-temperate bands. It's not a long burn time, but I'll start here. Ah, equatorial bands now. Okay, well now the deal is we want to get this to other moons. Well, or any moon, so that we can... well, we could probably do more than that. But... be careful. We have to correct the inclination. Well, we don't have to have to correct the inclination, but it might be better. Okay, let's say a month. Well, let's say IO first. We just want to fly by. We don't want to, like, make orbit. Making orbit around Io is bad. Flying by Io, not necessarily so bad. Well, it would probably help if we did a little bit of radial, too. Uh, I don't want to do too much of that. There we go. It's not a great flyby, but let's just take what we can get there. So, Io at a fair height. Probably not one that would satisfy a flyby contract, but we'll get some science from it. So, any new science here? Not so far. Okay, so I'll add that maneuver. 15 days, but we have to check on the other orbiter, which can help do some of the other moons, perhaps. We'll see how much Delta V it has left. But once we capture with the other one, we'll start with the Buzz Medium and the Lynx 4 to try and get the two Kerbals in equatorial orbit around the Earth. Okay. It's still charging. Well, Jupiter's there. Okay, we got some new signs high over the north temporal bands. This is higher up. I don't think we have to worry about the comms at periapsis as much. Okay, I'll just start now. Ignition. Instead of lifting the orbit up, Maybe this one can do a glancing sort of encounter with a moon. Instead of trying to meet up with a moon at periapsis, like the other one is doing. This doesn't have enough delta V for that. But this is already in line quite a lot. Not exactly though. But the right kind of correction could maybe get it to Callisto or Ganymede. Okay, let's try Callisto. Let's see. Well, the ascending node is all the way over there, so that wouldn't be any good. But if we tilt it a little bit... Aha! Not bad. Okay. Okay, maybe this is making me crash into... I think it's making me crash into Jupiter. 
want to get close to Callisto, but it keeps making me want to crash into... He's making me crash into Jupiter. Okay, so I'll just take a looser approach to Callisto here. We'll just take that. Slightly more than an hour encounter. And then after that we'll figure it out. So, let me get that alarm in an hour beforehand. Alright, that'll be minor for this one. It's recharging. And back to Space Center. I'm a little bit nervous. I, I, I don't remember if I saved the craft file with the new heat shield, the fixed heat shield. I, I trust it is, but um, I, I'm actually... Maybe we should roll back and check on that. Uh, should be alright. They'll just send some scientists up. <laughs> They'll be fine. The previous rescuees are gonna go. Whoop, no. And what the contract said was crew at least two, and then they have to stay there for seven days. Probably, I guess, yeah, we do have to launch them on it. Okay, SAS on, follow up, there's no good timing, we just have to get to the equator and then get to them, so there's no preferred timing for that. Okay, ignition, and launch. All right, looking good here. Okay, booster set. Staging. So, who do we want to get first? There's Tamara, and then there's Franius. They're both pretty low. Okay, well, actually, I want the cat to stay suborbital. <laughs> okay, uh, let's fling that off. Alright, back to prograde. I want to keep this completely within the requirements for this contract, which is above 200 kilometers and below 400 kilometers. We'll just have to wait for the phasing. Well, it looks like we'll have 0.6 no matter what. Okay. Alright, so we have that burn to do with this stage. Guess this stage is just going to be left in orbit though. Maybe I could set it to be suborbital and then bring this up. Hmm. Okay, we'll use the service module to boost the orbit back up after we dump the stage like this. So we'll stay suborbital, we'll just do the inclination change. Okay, go. Okay, let's keep it on disposal there. Alright. Separation. But, okay, well let me do ignition here. We'll try and meet up with it over there, even though it's in the dark. But we should try and meet up with Franless's Heap, because that'll be the first one we encounter, I think. Okay, that's in the atmosphere. <laughs> right. Um, let's stay a little bit out of the atmosphere. We No, okay, so we should probably not do that. We should meet up with it here at its apoapsis instead. It's safer. Yeah, forget that. We're not gonna go for its periapsis. I hope it doesn't reset my orbit every time I do a burn. No, it doesn't look like it. As long as I stay within those limits, it's fine. Okay, Franius' heap is catching up there. 
Okay, we want to pull the orbit down. At least both ends aren't in the atmosphere. That would have been more of a pickle. Okay, let's try and meet up with it. Okay, that's as close as we're going to get like that. Well, plenty of Delta V for this mission, just like there was plenty of Delta V for the moon one. Don't like that there's lack of comms around here. Oh, uh... Uh oh, we're, b we're below 200 kilometers right now. It doesn't seem to know that. It's still ticking down there. I don't know how it's going to feel about this, though. We might have to keep them around for longer. Okay. Friendless. Or friend, friendless. Friendless. Okay, friendless. Where you go? No, you need to orient properly, friendless. Okay, that's one. Now, Tamara is ahead. And it also has a low periapsis. I don't think there's any way we can sneak under. Maybe if we're really patient. Well, that's as tight to the atmosphere as I'm willing to go. I think the Kerbals were just joyriding and got themselves stranded. <laughs> Every Kerbal ha has a little rocket rocket plane of some kind. The instructions clearly say that they should not attempt to make orbit. But did they listen? No. Okay, well, we'll be meeting up with it here. And we're still not in the atmosphere. So, let's go with that. That seems like a good thing. Now, after we do all this, we have to hang out for th seven days. It's probably going to reset the clock on me. I don't know if... Maybe it won't, but we'll see. Okay, that should be easy enough to get into. All right. Well, Mark II lander can. That's more respectable. Tamara seemed to be starting out a bit short of food, water, and oxygen. That's a dangerous thing. Okay, well, our periapsis is a bit low right now. Let me just go to the intended levels again. I'll try to get them home. You know how they are. They always find a way to imperish themselves. Okay, we just have to wait whatever time it says. Okay, well, it's happy there. Let's hope it stays happy. Still happy? Still happy. Alright, let's bring it down. <laughs> 